Mr. Hello, Simon. hello, hello, everyone. Hello. Crappy <laughs> Jack. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I guess today we're just going to do a couple of circuits. We're at East Midlands Airport. It's a beautiful day. There's no wind. There's no nothing. We're just going to do a couple of circuits around the around East Midlands Airfield, I think, and then we'll take it from there and just see where we go. So, um, I guess we'll just get started. Sounds good to me and to all my viewers. Hello, um, I'm flying here with my good friend CJ. Uh, his details will be down in the description for you to check out his channel. And you might recognise the scenery as East Meds. So we're going to do a few formation circuits, see how that goes. So I'm ready to uh, turn batteries on and fire up the engines. Yeah, so I'm ready to start up. So let's do that. Mixture in, that's always good. Oh, good start first time. That never happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so engine one is on. Okay. Oh. Problem with this, I've got to I've got to move the yoke to uh, get to the igniter. <laughs> yeah. Put the beacon on as well. That'd be useful. Gonna knock some of the audio down a bit. Uh, could all bit of live playing with levels, why not? And I never get it right anyway, so I don't know why I bother. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> not quite as professional as you. <laughs> so we're, well, we're clearly both total pros, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm ready to go. Uh, engines are running. Um, everything's looking good. Yep, same here. I'm uh, absolutely ready to go. Um, I guess technically it was pushed back, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to spin around. Looks oh, like yeah. Yeah, no, I'm not <laughs> pushing back in a Mooney Bravo. And uh, we'll go off 0 nines. The slightly easier circuit if we go off. Okay. Uh, sorry, oh, not, not 9, sorry, oh. 2 7, 2 7. Okay, I'll follow you out to the one way anyway, so. Okay, doke. Uh, whatever you feel is, is best. Oh, my door's still open. I should probably close that. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's how, how everyone does it in, in East Midlands, just dry, you know, taxi out with the door open. <laughs> yeah, well, it's because I was in the Spitfire before, and it, it's nice having the, the hatch open when you taxi, because you can actually hear the engine, uh, and it's obviously a gorgeous right. sound. And I forgot I respawned in as a Mooney Bravo, so the door was <laughs> open in this case. <laughs> Uh, quite so I guess we're not doing a uh, ATC comms today because there's so it's just us flying around. There's no no one else uh, yeah. in the area that we know of. Yeah, we're going to be in permanent contact with each other anyway. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. T's and P's are surprisingly in the green. Good. And we could have gone off uh, midfield actually. We could have gone down Sierra, but. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, I say we're both light enough. We can do an intersection takeoff. Yeah. That's what they call it, isn't it? Intersection. It is, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll take whiskey, which I think is what Don Air use at East Smiths anyway. Um, I've not flown the Mooney Bravo in years, so I can't quite remember how much grunt this engine's got. Yeah. Very good. I just realised I've made a complete rookie, rookie mistake. Go on. I'm not even recording. Ah! Fucking idiot. I was going to do it while, whilst we're taxiing. <laughs> well, do, do you want me to put the brakes on and then you can um, do an intro and then we'll resume taxi again? Hello Simon. Hello Simon. Um, Simon is also a YouTuber as well. Uh, you can find him. Uh, I'll put a link to his channel in, in my description. Uh, we're currently just taxiing out to runway 27 at East Midlands Airport. Uh, we're going to do a couple of circuits. Just uh, 
just to pass a bit of time and then we'll see what happens after that. Um, you'll see I'm in a King Air and uh, Simon is uh, just coming up on my right. He's in a Mooney Bravo today. So, here we go, overtaking you. Why are you taxiing on the grass anyway? Um, yeah, I've just realised because I've got proper East Mid scenery, the taxiways aren't going to line up. The runway should be in the ah. right position. Um, we hope. So, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to turn that off. My, that was my bad. No, that's fine. Well, there we go. So, so Simon actually pays for things on FSX, and, and I don't. I just go with the uh, the vanilla, um, with all the built in stuff. Yeah, I'm far too much of a nerd. Um, right, I'm going to swing a left onto Whiskey here and uh, go from Whiskey, I think. Watch that. Try and give you a bit of room, assuming taxi, the, the intersection taxiway lines up, but probably doesn't. <laughs> we'll so we'll find out in a second. Yeah. So I can see you're kind of, kind of going diagonal across me at the moment. Yeah. And, then and I'm just going to hold left. short. That's me about sort of six foot behind the whole line, but yeah, it probably doesn't line up with your scenery. That's my bad. Yeah. I'll say if I just put myself at the hold marker, you'll see the difference, hopefully. There we go. Oh, brake check. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I am quite far back. Um, when the hell are the flaps on this thing? <laughs> In theory, I shouldn't need them, but I'd probably need them for slowing down more than anything. I was going to say it's for landing. Well, then again, you could probably land without them here, like say, are we used to slow down? Oh, they're there, they're well, hidden under the mixture knob. Ah, oh, right, okay. Nice. Yeah, I don't, don't need them for takeoff. So I can't remember what buttons I've got set for um, spoilers, if any. I don't think I've got any. Oh, well, never mind. I don't think the King Air has them. Uh, look. No, you're right. No spoilers at all. Okay. I think you've only got two stages of flaps as well, I think, in a King Air. Correct. Or yeah. Correct. I'll say only a flaps one for now for takeoff. It should be enough. He hopes. <laughs> Yeah, you do that. I'll follow because you're probably going to have a lot more grunt than I do. So um, you might pull away from me. I, I don't want you behind me and sort of uh, slamming into my tail, as it were. Yeah, that's fair enough. And of course, the problem with um, not having proper rudder pedals and tow brakes is, you know, I can only use like the parking brake to, to slow down. So it ends up looking like I'm constantly brake checking. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. Uh, no. So I've got you more or less on the centre line there. I'm so. going to say, am I showing up on the centre line for you? So you're about a foot to the right, but yeah, near has done it. Uh, that's not too bad. Okay, oh, I guess the scene we kind of lines up then for the runways, and that's the important bit. So let's go follow up. Okay, don't keep power to the masses. Have you set your altimeter? Uh, no, that's a good, a good point. Stop. <laughs> Wings. Um, just so we can be talking the same. I've just set mine to zero. Um, just so I was we can. Say it should just be set to standard, really. Um, standard pressure, yeah, two nine 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 two or ten thirteen. If you if you go by old money. Okay, we're going two nine nine two. Yeah about there. So I'm getting about 300 foot, there or thereabouts. Um, yeah, 300 feet. Cool. Pretty much, pretty much on the nose, 300 feet. I can't remember what the circuit height is, but um, uh, 1,200, 1,000, something like that, I would imagine. Alright, we'll see if we can hold about 1,200 then. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Right, here we go. Uh, and right hand circuit as well. Uh, right. Yeah. Roger that. Here we go. Cliff, take off. Oh yeah, you've got a lot more grunt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm at 
turbo crops on the Klinger, I think, as well. I, I was just going to say, I'm glad we got no wind, yeah. <laughs> 1,000 feet. Alright, there we go. Trim, DA, yeah, good things. And, oh, 1,200. Oh, oh do you have 1,200 already? Oh my yeah. gosh. So I need to adjust my trim now. Just my trim without without letting go of the uh, the yoke. Ah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <Nose lighting. laughs> I'm going to do that way. Oh. Well, trim, trim. There we go. Trim's looking good. So I don't know what airspeed you're going to get out of your <laughs> Mooney. Not very many. Uh, I'm currently just rolling out of climb at 100 knots. Oh wow. <laughs> so you're powering for like a yeah, 150 and then I'll end up at 150. I might... Uh, yeah, I reckon I'm probably going to end up around the 140 mark. Right. And I'm going to be firewalled on the throttles really. You, have you turned crosswind yet? Uh, no, not yet. Yeah, you probably oh, won't do that. I'm still dicking them out on my trip. <laughs> oh, okay. You know what, I'm going to turn crosswind and cut in front of you. <laughs> too much, too much trip. Ah! <laughs> oh, I drifted. Oh. So anyone out there that's actually a pilot, then, uh, you know, please, please don't judge me. <laughs> Sounds good, and I'm actually sped up quite significantly, so I am now doing about 155, and, I, okay. and my green band ends about 170, and I don't particularly want to be on that. Um, uh, no, not that really. Old, but, you know, I sort of can get that fast if I need to. Yeah. I'm turning downwind now, so... Yeah, I've just started downwind turn, 1200-ish feet, and... My usual skills at keeping altitude are plus or minus about 100 flight levels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not even remotely close. Oh, and I'm going to be following the A50 by the looks of it. That's pretty good. Nice. I believe there's so more of that. So for anyone that knows the area that East Midlands is, um, right between Nottingham, Leicester, Derby, West, well, I guess that's quite near. Is it the centre point of, the, of England? Is that what I heard? Something like that? Um, yeah, more or less. I think the geographical centre of the UK is in Rutland, um, right. which is like the furthest point from any coast. But um, sort of if you bed reckon a, a centre point, it is pretty much East Mids actually, yeah. Yeah. It's quite interesting to, um, you know, for, for plane nerds like us, I guess, to, to kind of park up down the side of the runway and watch the aircraft come in. And I, mean, I used to love doing that at like, Heathrow when I worked out on the road. Um, I get to go down to Heathrow to, you know, like where we used to have stores and things like that. And um, yeah, you said, like, there's literally a, a lay by at the end of uh, runway either left. <laughs> yeah, I've only ever done that once that I'd been out plane spotting. It was because my old housemate uh, suggested it. Because, I mean, I only live 10 minutes from East Mids. And, uh, well, you're, breaking, you're breaking up on me quite badly. <laughs> oh, am I? Um,
playing my levels a smidge. Yeah, I've, I've only done it once, um, and it was at East Mids, because it's only 10 minutes up the road, and we uh, went to see the Antonov 225, the big six-engine cargo Ukrainian thing. Absolutely massive aircraft. And we were sat at the end of runway 27, which, which is the one we're going to be coming in on now. Uh, just flying over the M1 now. And... Uh, I mean, nothing prepares you for actually how big it is because we, we were all watching it on flight radar. There was guys there with the radios and stuff, and it, it was the far side of Leicester, so so quite a long way actually away from us. And we could see him in the sky, and it looked bigger than any plane you've ever seen close up. And it was at least twenty miles oh, away. Yeah, I can't hear a word you're saying. You're so broken at the moment. Am I? Um, right, is that any better? Mm, it's still a bit broken. So I just don't know, it might just be the internet lagging out or it. Hmm, might be. I, I've just turned my um, speakers right down, so I was just wondering if it was the, the sort of microphone clipping or something. Maybe, so that's a lot better now, I can, I can hear you. Right, I think it was that. Yeah. Right, I am behind you. Cool, I'm on base. At a thousand feet. Just trying to pull it up a little bit. I'm trying to adjust the speed to help with the, the trim. Oh, yeah. Alright, I'm going to turn final. I'm going ridiculously quick at the moment for this aircraft, but we'll see how uh, easily it can bleed that speed off in a moment. <laughs> right. Oh yeah, I can see you. Yeah. Are you doing your base turn now? Uh, I'm final. Oh, are you? Bloody hell. <laughs> yeah, because you're going to come in a lot quicker than me, I thought I, I ought to... Uh, Sort of get my touch and go done, and then you're not going to be, um, you know, creeping up behind me on final. Because I'm I'm going very fast at the moment, short final, and I want to see how quickly this will bleed the speed off. And the answer is not very. Grab it in. Oh no, it doesn't like that. Oh, it doesn't like that at all. So I touched down there at about 120, just shy of 120 knots, which is, wow. <laughs> yeah, very, very, very fast for this. You would be normally around the 70 mark. Um, and I got a landing rate of 118 feet per minute, which for a light aircraft, oof, that's going to hurt your back after a few of them. It's not too bad, 118 per minute. Well, actually, yeah, for a light aircraft, that's probably really bad. Yeah, for a Mooney Bravo, it's on the heavy side. <laughs> Right, I'm up and climbed out, so you're uh, you're all good now. Cool. Clear for the option. And the option, yeah. Just trying to bring it around, find the airfield, I can't see it. <laughs> ah, there it is. Oh, too far to the left. Back. Yeah, I did that. <laughs> <laughs> I turned too, too hard to start with, um, so I wasn't behind you when I was doing the downwind, and then I thought I'll take it a bit gentle on the, on the base, so <laughs> completely missed it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, here we go, let's uh, bring the speed down, gear down. Oh yeah, and I, oh, I forgot I've got retractable gear! Oh, what am I doing? Yeah. Usually, usually when I'm playing, or way too late. Um, usually when I'm playing, I'm just like having a you know an airliner, just go yeah, auto land, that'll do. <laughs> yeah, 
Oh, I try. So that's that's the good thing about the Airbuses is they're very very easy to land manually compared to the Boeings. Um, so I, I tend to normally always land by hand unless I can't see the runway if it's foggy or something, and you sort of have to. But Oh dear. Maybe, maybe it's just I'm just used to the Boeing I'll come a bit off the centre of it. Here we go. Coming down, pull back, flare. Come on, and down. There we go. Look at that. And we're taking off again. Lovely. Positive weight gear up. Oh yes, very nice. Right, let's see where you are. Seems to be quite so I'm pretty much on your right wing. My right I'm just your off way. your right shoulder oh, yeah, now. Yeah, I turned an early downwind again because I was worried about you sort of creeping up behind me on your climb out, but I think I've uh, I've overdone it a bit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 1200. What's your, did, did you say altitude? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm about 1500, but cruising at 140, cruising, uh, airspeed is showing 140. Uh, yeah, I'm 160 and bang on 1200 actually, bloody hell. Get back a little bit to get back down to oh yeah, and I, I can bring my power back. Yeah, this thing doesn't slow down particularly quick. For some reason, I can't see the power station. That's weird. You can or can't? Cannot. Oh, I can see where it should be, because I'm pretty much over the top of it now. That's what was throwing me before, and I really cocked up my circuit, because normally you fly around the back of the, the cooling towers, and that's your right. base turn, and it puts you bang on. And because for some reason it's just not rendered in, um, I ended up overextending my base. Right. The, the circuits at East Mids are really, really easy because there's so many reference points and stuff, and you just fly yeah. from one to the other, and it's real. You know, it's quite nice. You don't have to think too hard. Yeah. So, well, you, you say so many reference. Scenery in FSX gives you none. <laughs> oh, I thought it had the power station in default. Ah, oh, bugger, right. Uh, hold on, so I just need to come back down a little bit, mate. Let's have a look. Um, so I've got the A50, the M1. Okay, yeah. Um, or what's it? What I'd recognise to be the A50 and the M1. No, I can't see a power station. Ah. Uh, well, the other way of doing it is it's about. 20 to 30 seconds after you cross the M1 is, I think, when you normally turn. Could tune into the NDB, but... I can see another airfield in the distance, though. I guess that'll be... Nottingham. It is indeed. Or where we're going east. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it? yeah, it's Tolleton. Right, I've just turned my, uh, finished my turn to final. Um, this is a more typical uh, distance out for East Mids, which feels very far away for a light aircraft, but I'll try and keep my speed up. Oh, and gear down. God, mustn't forget that. Yes, gear down. <laughs> uh, I'm just not used to flying a, a light aircraft with retractable gear. I normally fly the Grob, actually, the Grob Tutor or the Heron. That's right, because I've seen a lot of your, your, uh, like, your 
all your videos. Oh, have you? Um, yeah. You use um, yeah the Co-op Tutor in those, which is pretty cool. I use it um, only because it's actually really nice to fly, and it's a lot nicer to fly than the Cessna. Um, and you can see more because it's got a low wing. You know, when you turn in, it doesn't blank out what you're trying to look at. Um, that's the beauty of the low wing. And it's got a bit of grunt to it. I mean, I've done up and down the country in the Grob, and it's surprisingly quick. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I remember doing the old um, air experience flights, and they were, mm. like you say, pretty, pretty grunty. You know, yeah. Pretty quick for, you know, for, like you say, a light training aircraft like that. Yeah. Yeah, at least they do 125 knots, there or thereabouts, indicated. Yeah. I miss flying those, they were great. 40, 30, 20, 10. <laughs> retard. Retard, retard. Oh, 210 feet per minute, that's even worse! Yeah, no, that was a uh, touch and go, touch and go. Alright, I'm going to come in for a full stop. Oh, okay, right, I'm going to do a uh, bad weather circuit then. Off. Bad weather circuit. You basically stay a lot closer into the airfield. You turn base almost, uh, sorry, turn crosswind almost as wheels leave the ground. Um, it's just a very tight in circuit. It just makes it a quicker circuit, so I'm, you know, you're not sat there waiting for me forever. No, 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 that's fine. I don't, I don't mind. It's more the, uh, so I'm going to do a full stop, so I can actually, I need to figure out how the aileron trim and, and that works. So. Oh right, are you not balanced? Can you not just um, pull fuel from the other wing or something? Probably can, but it's figuring out. Like I say, I'm not an experienced pilot, as uh, anyone that's watched any of my videos. <laughs> There's, no, there's normally on the sensor console you'll have like a big dial that'll be like left, right or sensor or something like that. Yeah. I'm not familiar with the King Air. But. It all looks balanced, I'll be honest. So. Oh, well in that case, probably alright then. <laughs> well, that means you can, uh, if you slow down, you can dump all your flaps and then just lawn dart it towards the runway and you shouldn't speed up too much. Which is a more typical approach, actually, for a light aircraft. And not to follow the three degree thing. Uh, so I guess more of if it's, you know, you're an airliner using the ILS, that'll be... Uh... Yes. Yeah, three degrees very, very shallow for a light, light aircraft. Yeah. Well, especially if it's running a, a tight circuit like that, you, you, know, you won't have the room to do um, three degree approach on it. No. Oh, that's, this is more or less a perfect lineup. I'm more happy with that. Hey, that's what you want, getting better each time. Yeah, practice makes perfect. It does indeed. Although so you wouldn't believe it watching me. Ah, oh, okay, that sounds good. Um, looks like it'll just be a nice kind of you know, segment to do. Um, you know, FSX multiplayer, some fat sim, GTA, all that kind of thing. You know, give the channel yeah. a variety. Oh, that sounds um, great. But yeah, we'll, have, we'll definitely have to do a lot more of this kind of stuff there. So. Yeah, that, I really enjoy this. I might have to crack out my headphones just to make sure my... Um, Audio's not causing issues with the microphone. Yeah. Well, so I'm not sure if it's you or me. It's like sometimes when it's like if I'm inside, yeah, I've got the inside view. Sometimes you go a little quiet, and then when I change to the outside view, it picks up again, and sometimes vice versa. So I don't know whether it's just me or the internet or, or what. Oh, well, you do every now and then go very, very quiet, like you've moved away from your mic or something, but not. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, that's not too bad. Yeah, 
Uh, what's your airspeed? Uh, All oh, right. I think it's only happened once in yeah. in real life, yeah. <laughs> but it sucks to be that pilot. <laughs> yeah, I think it was pretty bad actually. Okay. Twenty. Right. Thirty. Okay. Oh, and that was my worst one of the lot. Where you at the minute? Have a look. Are you right behind me? <laughs> yeah, I am. Yeah, <laughs> I was following you in. I suppose there's probably not the worst landing rates for a flapless landing. I was going to say, if you've got no flaps to land with, then... Yeah. Oh no, I do have flaps to land with, but I, I needed to keep the speed up. So I was going too fast to have the flaps out, just to, uh, to keep up with you. <laughs> oh, my, <fair> enough. <laughs> Alright, though. Alright, off at night. I'm going to follow you, actually. Oh, I don't really know where I'm going. Uh, where are we on, Mike? <laughs> well, you're on the grass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, according to you, yeah. I'm going to turn back towards the active, actually. Yeah, yeah. Take the straps off. Yeah, see, I'm, I'm definitely much better in an airliner than I am a light aircraft, I think. Yeah. I think I am that, really. Yeah, it's just a shame that when it comes to you know, if you do proper pilot training, you can't just jump straight into a, a 74 or a, you know, an A380 or something. Just go, yeah, I already know how to fly this. I played it on FSX. Yeah. There's, I mean, obviously, if I've, I've flown a fair few light aircraft, and I find flying light aircraft in the sim a lot harder than flying in real world because you can't feel anything. And a lot of the accelerations and bumps and stuff like that, you, you need to be able to actually feel those G-forces in a light aircraft. It doesn't matter so much yeah. in a, uh, an airliner. And it's like the airliner will just fly itself. And, yes. Um, yeah, but yeah, like I say, light aircraft, yeah, it's, it's, the same, it's the same as driving a car. You, you, know, you can feel how the car reacts to different things. And, um, yes. You know, like if you're getting a crosswind drift in an aircraft, you can feel it. Yeah. Yeah, you just can't do that in a sim, which is a bit um a bit annoying sometimes, I think. Yeah. Ooh. And coordinated turns are just oh, impossible in the sim because you, you just can't feel that balance. You know straight away if it's not coordinated when you're in the plane because yeah. <laughs> his stomach's thrown to the outside and <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I've got a button for Ala on trim, but it doesn't actually show me. It doesn't move when I click it. <laughs> yeah, at the moment I'm seeing you're sort of doing a hard right roll from just looking at your uh, uh, ailerons on the wing, but that might well not be respective of what's actually going on. Um, yeah, so there's a slight left-hand roll according to my, 
from what I can see anyway. I can uh, see your ailerons moving actually. Uh, yeah, I can, uh, yeah. I'm giving it a bit of left and right. Yeah, yeah, I can see you waving. Oh yes, so, yeah, that looks central, yeah. Alright, so, if I mess around with the trim, what's that look like? Nothing. <laughs> it looks censored, but I, yeah, don't go off what I can see. I'm, I'm surprised that it's even modelled, to be honest, in multiplayer. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's pretty good. I mean, the multiplayer's always been quite good like that. Yeah. Yeah. Breaking the, breaking the 20 knot rules. Oh, uh, yeah. Actually, I've got no indication of ground speed on here below 40 knots. No, I haven't. Is it's lovely to fly, yeah. Not too much lag on the turbo props either, from memory on the King Air. It's quite responsive for that, mm. for a turbo yeah, prop. Yeah, the only thing I have found is, like you said, a bit with the same with the Mooney Bravo, it doesn't like to slow down. Yeah. The Dash 8's like that, that's pretty much the only turbo prop I ever fly it. It doesn't slow down, it's surprisingly slippy. Huge lag on the turbo props, but the beauty is you can reverse the pitch. So once the wheels are on the ground, you just reverse the pitch on the props and it's like you've just put an anchor out, the thing stops like it's at a brick wall. Yeah, it's the thing I could do pitch reverse on these. How can you? Oh, right, yeah. I'm right behind you. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty, so yeah, flapless takeoff, give myself a fighting chance at low drag. I'm gonna go for a full flap takeoff so it takes as little power as possible. Yeah, and I'll do a bit of a performance takeoff. So. Right, okay. bit more mixed yet right that's full power full prop rpm engine yeah, screaming i will be until your turbines get properly spooled up i would have thought so i am and i'm drifting about 110 knots and that's probably as much as I can get in climb. Yeah, see I'm climbing out of 120. Yeah, it seems to be stable at about 120. Um, climbing out at... Uh, I've, I've actually got no idea of VSI at the moment. Oh, 
up speeders. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. So I, I've got my moving map loaded up just in case we do some navigation, and we're yeah. we're currently right on top of Donington Park Circuit, um, and literally just north of us, there's a forest, and it's got all the names of the you know local names of the forest. It's called the Shrubbery. I wonder if it's got a little path running down the middle. <laughs> right, I'm going to turn crosswind. Oh, that's brilliant. Oh, okay. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, I'm firewalled on the throttles, doing about 140 at the moment. Okay, so if I can hold it at 140, about 1,500 feet. Uh, yeah, I'm just over 1,400. Yeah. I, say, cause I think I found the, the trim setting nicely, and it's now just controlling the, the throttle to keep the altitude. Ah, nice. But actually, you know, but you are right, this King Air is so responsive. It is, it's nice to fly. Turn downwind. Oh yes, and I can pick up the Cranwell MDB from here, so we could go over to Cranwell. Normally about a 10, 10 minute hop, if that, well, yeah. Okay. Just realised I could also go uh, live on Twitch if we, if we wanted to. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've got mine set up for YouTube. Yeah, I haven't figured out yet how to link Twitch into YouTube. Oh, can you do that? There's got to be a way, or there's got to be a way to be Unless OBS can you know, find a way to... Uh, there might be a plug-in or something. I know in base OBS you can't stream to two sources. But, yeah. but you might be able to right, don't know, stream to local hosts and have another program running that pushes it out. Maybe, maybe that's what it is. Maybe I need um, Stream Deck, Screen Capture, device that streams multiple. Yeah. Multiple uh, hosts. Do you have a capture card or are you just doing it on your graphics card? No, I just do it direct off the graphics card. Actually, yeah, I, I wouldn't get a capture card, but it's just whether it's that, is it worth 250 notes yeah. to get a decent one or. Yeah, they're really expensive, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, to be fair, for what they do, I'm not surprised. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I will get one one day. It's on my wish list on Amazon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, same. They've got plenty of spare PCIe slots on the computer, so. <laughs> and that's the other thing I don't know how. I don't think I've actually got spare slots in the mix. I've got, um, I've got so many USB devices on my computer that I've had to buy two. Oh, right. Um, um, as well as I've got my you know, sound card on there as well and the graphics card. Yeah. Um, oh, I so use USB hubs. The graphics card, so. Yeah, the graphics card takes um, two, two slots on the, on the back anyway, which is a bit annoying. Yeah, mine does, and it pretty much makes another one inaccessible as well from yeah. memory. Cool, I'm just a smidge over 140, 1400 feet, about halfway through base. Yeah, so I can see you in the, in the distance. Where am I? Am I midfield? Yeah, about midfield on downwind. Yeah, looks it. Right. 
this aircraft. Always been a favourite of mine, even playing in X-Plane, um, whilst I was kind of learning how to fly, um, you know, on a sim, yeah, using oh. King Air. It's the King Air in X-Plane? Oh, I wish I picked yeah. it now. I went with the Mooney just because it's the one that I've not flown for ages. Right. I'm regretting the choice. <laughs> Don't mind, actually. Yeah, do that. Let's do a full stop landing, then you can you can change your aircraft. Yeah. Um, we'll start a, another episode after that. So. Yeah. Okay. But that, yeah, that probably makes a bit more thematic sense being in King Air's going over to Cranwell anyway. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Just crossing the M1. Oh, there we go. Best landing of the day. 59. Uh, a buttered landing. Although it was only because I floated like a brute because I was determined to touch down as gentle as possible. To be fair, my balloon didn't last two times I thought I touched down. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and I can come off at Sierra. Nice. Yeah, I was quite low coming over the M1. I was just bouncing off the top of an Eddie Stobart, I think. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, steady Eddie. Other brands are available. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. I am down wheels stopped, and I, I came off at the high speed exit Sierra. I don't know if you'll got quick well, enough to get off there. I just can't do that. <laughs> so I'm literally just doing everything by eye, just making sure I'm not dropping too fast. Or it's going to be really hard. It's come all over the place already. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird because I can fly remote control planes, but I, I can't. I just can't fly an FSX in third person. It just messes with my head. <laughs> Looks pretty good. A little bit left. Oh, a little bit low. Yeah, that was a bit low. of a nose drop. Oh, balloon. That that was an aggressive pullback. I can actually see your nose dipping when you're braking. That's quite cool. It's good, isn't it? I mean, that's, I've always liked the multiplayer in FSX. Um, just because you can see things like that. And if you've got crash settings on, it stops the... Um, you, know, you stop seeing people like diving through the, you know, through the deck. Yeah. Here we go. Look at that. Nicely done. Yeah. 
Yeah, God, I even saw you sort of recoil once you stopped. So that's amazing. So you don't get any of that on Vatsim at all. You know. No, well, I guess they just need to keep the bandwidth down for, for well, little things. Like Yeah, almost. I mean, you can see things like gear flaps, rudder, but sometimes they sort of glitch out a little bit. Um, but, yeah, the beauty is you you can have other aircraft that you don't physically have in your sim. Um, so you'll see all their different liveries and the correct one that that actual person has spawned in as. So, you know, maybe it's an old flybee livery in a dash A or, or whatever. Um so it, it looks a lot better when you see lots and lots of people. But if you're actually zoomed in on just one aircraft and trying to watch all the ailerons moving and stuff, you're not really going to see that. Uh, I see. Yeah, we'll do it. I mean, we'll, we'll get you set up at some point. We'll do it in, like, observer mode. So you, you won't see... Um, that, sorry, other people won't see you, but you'll see them as as if you were there, um, and you sort of get get the flavour of it, as it were. And maybe if I was online, for example, then you would see me, and you you could then sort of follow on, and we could do something similar to this, but maybe yeah, at Gatwick. It'd be kind of nice. I mean, like I say, you're clearly a, a much more experienced pilot than I um, to kind of actually get some uh, some training and so I can actually learn to do. It. Yeah, and actually following along in observer mode might not be a bad bad idea for a train next size because you'd hear me doing the radio calls to, you know, Gat Gatwick's a good one to do circuits at because it's a nice easy circuit um, and you've got some traffic and there's normally a, a, a controller on. Um, Manchester, there's normally a controller on, but it's a bit shit for circuits. Um, and Heathrow, well, you can't do circuits at Heathrow, but... Hmm. Well, so I imagine he flies a bit too busy for just circuit flying. Yeah, you you, you just can't do it because you can't do VFR in uh, in the London zone. So that covers City no. and Heathrow. You you're not allowed. No VFRs allowed in there. So, um, right. Luton's not too bad in Stansted actually. Yeah, also, I was like, I imagine Stansted's probably quite a good one to go to as well. But yeah, no, we'll have to look at that. Hmm. Um, in the interim, let's go park up so you can change your aircraft. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to release my brake. I'm going to head over to the GA ramp. And uh, uh, whilst I do that, all, all the people that are watching, um, we'll call it an end to this episode. Thanks very much for hanging out. Don't forget to go check out all, all our social medias. Like I said, I'll put a link to Simon's YouTube channel in my description. Um, so yeah, go check that out as well. Loads of tutorial videos on like navigation and how to actually fly an aircraft. So yeah, go check that out if you're interested. Um, and until the next episode, um, catch you later. Bye.